Now, you know there are double-decker buses. There are double-decker trains. There are double-decker ferries. Um, uh, double-decker, um, uh, beds. B bunk bed. Uh, double-double burgers. I'm hungry now. Well, uh, my point is, why are there not any more passenger airliners? There really only is the Airbus A380. And while well, a long time ago, there was also the Breguet du Pont, which is 1950s airliner, but that's long forgotten. How can it be that there are only really big airplanes with big wingspans that have two decks in them? Why are airliners like the 737 only built as a single deck airplane? To answer that question, I turned the 737 into um, uh, an abomination. Abomination 737. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard the Double Decker 737. And you may think, oh, Swiss, you did a poor job making this concept airliner. But no, 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 no. It is all fully modeled. Let's take a look at what a Double Decker 737 could look like. Because this is all fully realistically simulated. I've completely changed the cabin design. Let's go inside and we can see how you would even enter at all this airplane. Take a look at what we've got here. See, the thing about building a double-decker airplane is that you need some sort of stairs to interchange. The A380, for example, has a big staircase. Way too big to fit in our tiny cabin. Kind of the same with the 7478, for example. This one also has some relatively big stairs. I can't do that, but the old 747s had a staircase that looked like this. Sort of a fairy tale style spiral staircase that I've actually walked up on when I slept in a 747-200, and this is exactly the design I copied here. See, this is a stair that people could walk up on. As you can see, I've had to remove like uh, one seat per row here on the business class, but that would be nice for, you know, space. So this thing even still has a screen. You can, you know, kind of pass the cabin. There wouldn't be other, any other way to fit a staircase into this plane, by the way. But you can even pass with your trolley. It's a bit of a parkour course for your trolley. But that is completely fine. You can walk through the other people here in the economy. But you could also get upstairs indeed. Let's go and just quickly do that. Here's the upper deck, ladies and gentlemen. We can see we've just walked up here through the stairs. We have a little bit of, you know, extra extra space up here that I haven't actually utilized. And here is the upper cabin of our airplane. Isn't that amazing? So for the first time ever, you get a really tall view out of a Boeing 737. And that is really, really cool. Um, what is not cool is literally anything else about this plane. It's probably the dumbest thing I've ever done. Now, the reason why this is a big problem and why planes don't really have upper decks is because boarding the planes can be extremely hard. The airport compatibility really, really suffers from this design. We need some sort of a dual jet bridge design. There, after all, there's a reason why the Airbus A380 doesn't fly everywhere. Well, you need kind of dual jet bridges to, you know, host the upper deck and the lower deck for boarding. But you know what? We don't need that. We can just board via the stairs, which would take a really long time. It would be very very complicated. Um, also, these stairs aren't necessarily the best to walk up on, but that doesn't matter. Boarding is not really that big of an issue. I'm more worried about like um, how you would bring food here. I mean, here is sort of a catering door that I've completely broken. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. But I mean, here's the upper deck kitchen. How would you bring stuff up into here? Um, you definitely need like a very tall service truck to get into the door. Um, now, I kind of am a bit afraid to look at the weight and balance sheet here. You know, even with this plane running at half the capacity it could, so we basically talk about a fully loaded, normal Boeing 737, we are running extremely overweight. 80,000 kilograms is the maximum weight. We're now at 106,000 kilos. Why is that? Because in real life, making a plane two decks is very structurally complex. I mean, if you've ever seen an A380 being constructed, these two decks that it, this plane has are very much built into the structure of the plane. And that really makes it a lot lot heavy just on empty weight. I honestly don't know if this thing will fly. We'll probably have the worst performing 737 ever. I mean, just the aerodynamic drag as well is just going to be immense. We probably need uh, two more engines and then we have the A380 problem again. You know, I mean, we can, oh, we can, tr oh, whoa, oh, this plane sits a bit, oh, it looks so stupid. It sits a bit unnicely here on the, 
on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, the two deck 737 is taking off. So let's take a look now. Full power. I mean, we are gaining speed, though, so that's a good news. Uh, we are at Los Angeles' longest runway, so we might be able, when we use the whole runway, to actually achieve flight in our double-decker 737. I would very much love that. All right, 150 knots. This thing probably needs, like, 160 at least to somehow lift off. But, ladies and gentlemen, we're... Tail strike, no problem. We are flying a double-decker Boeing 737. And it actually, like, kind of worked. We're completely over overweight, but this is absolutely brilliant. We can turn on the autopilot, the airplane climbs, uh, until it does it, until it stalls out. Oh my God. What I kind of wonder about is how high can we fly? I mean, we've got, we are so heavy and also we are so fat. Um, And by the way, we are not, we're not even at all carrying all the load we could. Um, in terms of volume, this is quite a bit of an empty airplane. So let's go ahead and speed time up a little bit and see how the flight simulator thinks this plane should climb. And you know what? After a while, we reach a bit of altitude and the plane doesn't fly super slowly. I don't hate this at all. But once again, we're not utilizing our space at all. See, this is the passengers on the second floor. This is the passengers on the, on the first floor here. Both are only at the middle section. I kind of want to be able to fill up the plane a little bit better. The, to do that, we need an engine upgrade. And that is a little bit hard to do because yes, in modern day times, it's very appropriate to put bigger engines, you know, like the GE90. You know, the bigger the engine, the more efficient it is because it can just move air, you know, quickly or anyway. You can't really do a bigger engine on the 737, can you? It's absolutely impossible. Um, I mean, the CFM engine has to be shaped a bit weirdly in order to not hit the ground. The 737 is a very low ground airliner. So what you need to do is put four engines. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is the CFM 56 four engine double decker 737. And this is, uh, this is very smart. Very smart. Now we can probably fully load this airplane. Let's do that. Fully loaded passengers, everyone on board. Now, what does that mean is that question. First of all, it means the landing gear is very much struggling. Genuinely, this plane is, uh, the landing gear has to be upgraded too. So you can't just camper deck your way around this whole thing. You can't just put this kind of stuff and make a second deck. You have to make a lot of changes. Either way, how many passengers do we fit? Time for the classics. Was there one count? Uh, this is the lower deck. Three, four, five, six. Got 50 rows of economy seats here. That is actually crazy. Hmm. That means we've got 300 economy seats plus 10 business class. This is a 310 seat airplane, which is more than some 787 Dreamliner configurations, by the way. Huh. So how how does this plane fly now when it's got 300 people loaded? Probably very poorly. This is definitely like the stupidest idea ever. While you may think, yes, this is honestly not that, you know, bad of a question. You may kind of ask yourself sometimes, by the way, we're having constant engine strikage because, oh yeah, there it happens again because of our struts being overloaded. You may think, well, everything is double decker. Why is there only the A380? Why haven't we made any smaller plane with two decks? This is why. By the way, we've got a great amount of power. This is immensely fun. Oh, yeah. This plane accelerates very nice. Oh, it doesn't fly nice. It uh, accelerates nicely. It doesn't fly nicely. Um, come on. You've got four engines, brother. Take off. You've got four engines. No. Get off the ground. Get off the ground now. Oh, shoot. All right. Well, that was a slight overrun. The slightest of overruns, but no worries. Oh, shoot. Uh, See, because we made our plane so much heavier, we'd need new wings. Definitely the wing isn't long enough wingspan, but also bigger horizontal stabilizers and elevators. We'd also need a bigger rudder, bigger vertical stabilizer. This is like, we'd need a whole new airplane in order to make a double decker. We can't just like what if Dave did with the A321 as compared to the A320, make the plane longer. We have to change the entire thing. Let's go full power again and see if we can at all take off. This is not good. And we are also, yeah, fuel is an issue, I've just realized, because we are now four engines. But now we're taking off with almost 100,000 kilograms more weight than we're supposed to. And it doesn't work. So we can't even like fully, fully load the airplane up anyway. This is immensely dumb and it looks very, it doesn't even look good. If it at least was a good model, I kind of messed it up. All right, come on. You are a very powerful airplane. I'm giving it some affirmations. Look, 140 knots. Look at that acceleration. Absolutely tremendous. Don't worry about your, yeah, a little bit of 
This happens a bit, you know, no problems. See, let's put the flaps down now nicely. The power really isn't an issue. It's just that the wing can't keep up. But now we can take off. Look, yeah, with a good piloting, we are actually able to fly. We just need millions of speed. Come on, come on, keep the speed at a good pace. Let's go turn the autopilot on, which is the autopilot is struggling, mainly because it's so confused. Why the hell do my wings not work as well as they used to? Why did I get fat? Ah, this is the most unstable plane I've ever flown. Great news, ladies and gentlemen, we've crashed again. How about we try a landing? Which is something that can only happen at an immense amount of speed and can only happen with this plane being flown at incredible precision. You can really see how the wing is struggling. That is so interesting. Like, not only is it bent incredibly high, as if it, like, you can really see the load of this plane in the wings. It is absolutely, these are, this is like ellipse shaped. But also, you can see these vortices being generated here. We need to fly this plane at practically 250 knots or something to keep a stable air speed. Otherwise, this plane won't fly properly, which is a problem because you need to uh, be at 260 knots to even put the landing gear down. I really want to see if we can land and stop the plane. I mean, we've got so much mass and so much momentum of that trying to stop 170 tons on these small wheel brakes, which we haven't upgraded either. That could be a bit of a problem. Let's see if we can stop. But genuinely, this is the only flyable speed of this plane. It's absolutely ridiculous how poorly I've made this plane fly. All right. Hard landing will definitely cause the landing gear to be extremely damaged. And we have a bit of a... Whoa! Don't worry. Don't worry. You're okay. You're okay. This is an absolutely unsafe and unflyable airplane. Our brakes are already completely on fire and it is unable to stop at all. And we just do an overrun and we die. Ladies and gentlemen, that really hasn't worked. Yes, of course, we're flying at an incredible amount of weight, but we've completely lost all brakings and we are just flying through the town of Corfu now. We've killed everyone on board and Everyone be side. All right, let's be trying to do a normal landing at a big international airport. Even though the 737 normally really flies to Corfu, where we just completely crash. Let's really try to do a normal landing that doesn't go out of control. I want to fly the airplane very, very, very stably. Put out the flaps fully. Get the speed brakes ready. Get everything ready for our landing. This plane flies really badly, by the way. This is probably the worst flying airplane concept we ever had because we've got so little authority of any control surface. This thing just wobbles around the air. I don't know if you, I mean, you're not able to tell that here in the video. It just doesn't fly right at all. All right, let's maybe slow it down. 240 knots is fine. Let me go ahead and put out this reverse thrust and try to land smoothly. And this way. I mean, this wasn't a smooth landing, but this way I think we can maintain control. We now need to put full brakes into this plane, making sure that the brakes don't catch fire, hopefully. Oh, that is a, a bit of a bit of a strike and a fire. This is the worst thing I've ever done. Yeah. You definitely need bigger landing gear, which would also need a bigger fuselage to fit that big landing gear. This is an absolute this is big disaster but we stop you know god consider this video a bit of a cautionary tale on why there are why you shouldn't do this what i did and why airliners manufacturers didn't do it either so thank you guys so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys tomorrow as always good night and a special thanks goes out to my members my supporters <laughs> guns killer r27 james deram that dude anime gods of gaming derek insider plane nishititsu finer professional jamal rylan williams and new the york you've got beautiful names